Climate activists are like parents. They motivate us to work hard for our own good. The first lesson every parent teaches their baby is independence. Learn to walk by yourself, clean, go clean up your toys, clean up your room. All climate activists want, essentially, is for us to clean up our room, our planet. Only through these lectures will we become responsible and capable citizens of Earth. But sometimes, climate activists, like parents, dramatize situations. Sure, these lessons are for our own betterment, but how long until the students feel burnouts from their parents' constant reminder of the worst case scenario? The other way around as well, if a teacher keeps complimenting a student, how long until they become misguided delusionals out in the real world? These are questions that need to be addressed regarding environmental awareness because, quite frankly, dramatization is embedded in its core framework. When I think of climate change, I think of polar bears stranded on melting ice, or sinking islands, or bear forests. These are images that are deeply planted in our heads that when someone mentions climate change, we immediately turn our heads to these tragic incidents and convince ourselves that the world must be getting worse. But I'm here to tell you that it isn't. Life, and life throughout history has constantly been improving and has never gotten this great. When in doubt, I look at these facts. All of a sudden, the world is not as bad as it seems. You have a fixed ozone, fully repaired by 2050. Global temperatures rising at a slower trajectory, and there is progress in land conservation. Climate change is a serious problem. The tasks that we as citizens of Earth must undertake are still plenty. But the media definitely makes things worse by feeding us with more tragic news. And in turn, we think all that ever happens is tragedies around us. From my experience, climate activism suffers from this dramatization. Around the second semester of 10th, uh, around the second semester of 10th grade, I had the opportunity to give a grade level presentation to my peers about waste reduction and uh, solutions we could take at AISG. Too bad the presentation turned out to be a flop, though. Students kept taking more than one paper towel at a time, categorizing trash in the wrong bin, and so forth. Even more so, a few of my friends made jokes about it, about my presentation, and honestly speaking, I found myself laughing with them. Over the years, climate activists kept using big numbers and vaguely emphasizing the threat of climate change. So in turn, people grew tired and began trusting them less. And I was being no different than them. This same mockery was a direct result of climate activists being overly dramatic and critical. For instance, while researching for my not-so-successful presentation, I came, across an, I came across an article by the BBC that let me down. 27% of the world emission, it claimed, could be blamed on China. China's nonstop production of 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide was what was bringing the world down. But for me, it was the article's dramatization that was letting me down. We all know the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. In this instance, don't judge an entire nation based on a single statistic because it overly simplifies situations. A nation with a high population is prone to generate more carbon dioxide just from cooking, driving, etc. To account for this, we can divide the total emission by the population, in other words, per capita. With this new approach, the truth becomes that China is only the seventh highest country um, emitting carbon dioxide uh, compared to countries that have similarly big economies. Notice how just by considering the population, more countries are merging out of the blue. Unfortunately, I realized this bias only after the presentation, but still, I decided to add another layer of transparency, time. China is the biggest, biggest emitter as of now, but over the years, high-income countries have emitted significantly more since the 19th century. China, as a middle-income country, is experiencing what any developed country had gone through when they were misdevelopment. This dramatization combined with misinformation was what was keeping me from being real with my audience, my friends. If I were to continue down the journey of helping the environment, I would first have to help myself. But the more I tried to tackle this problem, the more I found myself in a dilemma. The hard truth is that dramatization is effective. 
It's the reason why politicians and historical leaders are so remembered. It's the reason we pick the most eye-catching books. We uh, click on headlines with big statements and why I was employing it in my presentation. For example, headlines often quantify the number of deaths to warn us about the consequence of climate change. In effect, we, these statistics alert us, as it should. But something we need to realize is that these death, death tolls, too, are dramatic. In fact, there's bias towards the different causes of deaths. Earthquakes or volcanoes, which are spectacles for the audience, are more likely to get reported with just one death compared to food shortages, which require 40,000 to receive coverage. Not only that, contrary to what we see from these, from these articles um, conveying these death tolls, uh, death tolls in general have decreased. With improved food security and better national responses, less people die from uh, natural disasters. This in no way undermines the fact that climate change isn't a is a serious problem. But what this tells us is that we now, have the, we now have the ability to warn people and evacuate them to safety, something that's emphasized not nearly enough in the climate community. Dramatization is how humans work. It's how we get an entire civilization to get up and move. But as much as it's effective in that regard, it doesn't necessarily dissipate its negative effects, such as the undermining of credibility which climate activism suffers from. And at this rate, it doesn't seem like dramatization will subside anytime soon. This is why each of us need to save ourselves from being swayed by this dramatic worldview. Starting here from this theater, a local solution to a global problem. Don't fall into this dramatic view like others by remembering the following. Expect bad news because the media won't stop, nor does it care that, that you're being deceived. It's only up to you. Divide and compare because single figures can be deceiving. Always try to take a look at them from different perspectives. Lastly, start with solutions because judgment only leads to discouragement. Instead of calling others out, help them make amends for their mistakes. My name is Andy, and thank you.